We do a lot of videos on this channel to help saxophone players get better, but one of the most valuable things in any musician's journey is access to great mentors. Recently, I went to a bunch of concerts across three different countries and asked some of my favorite saxophone players in the world what they did to get where they are today. And I found out there is one thing that they all did and still do, which is something everyone watching can also do. The first concert was at the Blue Note in Milan, Italy, which is about a four hour drive from where I live. Totally worth the trip to see Bob Reynolds and his band though. too many nights to count when I was living in New York City where I was on a subway ride home, a long ride home, equal parts of me going, I should give up and I should get better. Should I throw in the towel or should I try harder? I mean, seeing Joel Fromm and Chris Potter play down in the village, jazz heroes of mine along the way, Joshua Redman, Chris Potter, Michael Brecker, Kenny Garrett, I mean, Branford Marsalis. <laughs> What am I even doing trying to do this? I'll never be at that level, you know? And then the next day waking up and going, I'm excited to, to try, to, to move ahead. Each time I would see these people perform, I learned a tremendous amount just by uh, observation. I mean, things you would just never learn from only listening to a recording. I can't even imagine how you would do this if you weren't immersing yourself in seeing fantastic musicians perform live. <laughs> concert for me was all the way back in New York at Dizzy's Club. The band is called The Heavy Hitters, led by Mike Ledon, and includes two more of my favorite saxophone players, Vincent Herring and Eric Alexander. <laughs> When I first came to New York, I met Lou Donaldson, who asked me, is that a saxophone in that case? I said, yes, sir. He says, uh, you know anything about Charlie Parker? I said, yeah, I know 25 solos. And he and his friend fell out laughing. <laughs> I said, no, I really know 25 solos, maybe 26, and they doubled over, laughed even harder. And I didn't get what he meant by that, why he laughed and thought that was so funny. But now I get it, you know, having heard Extra Gordon, Joe Henderson, Freddie Hubbard live, Art Blakey live, Michael Brecker. Of course, I studied with Phil Woods. I heard Phil Woods a lot. People later come along, and if you didn't hear those things, your perspective is very different. And I stress to all of my students to go and hear as much live music as they can. <laughs> source of inspiration and it's also a source of knowledge both good and bad examples of things and if you're studying and trying to be serious about this music you have to have that at the front of your agenda a few days later i went down to the village vanguard to hear the great ben wendell and his band it's worth noting that these concerts were pretty much all sold out <laughs> As a performer, the, the, the power of being in communion, not just with the musicians that you're playing with on stage, but then feeling that synergy uh, reach out to the audience and then everyone getting on the same wavelength. There's just nothing more powerful than that. It's just, it's, it's kind of what, why I live to play music. <laughs> And the feeling for me as a listener and as someone on stage is this 
really hard to describe mixture of, of joy and energy and exhilaration and, and maybe a little bit of danger too. All of the greatest musicians that I've ever seen perform, they have that. They have that immediacy. I've always just been checking out like, what are they doing um, to, to capture that magic and, and to capture that energy. It's a weird joke, but it's kind of, kind of mean it. You know, like in the movie, The Shining, how there's like evil spirits that have been collected in the walls? Here it's the opposite. There's, there's been so much greatness that had occurred in these walls that when you get on the stage, you feel connected to that continuum and you feel supported. You don't feel scared. You feel this, this, this unbelievable energy and love and encouragement. Actually, the first set I ever played here, Joshua Redman showed up, and but I was glad. I didn't know that at the time. He was in the back. That's Steve Cortica, another great saxophone player and teacher in the Better Sax Studio, who came along for the hang. New York is a unique city when it comes to music, and after the first set at the Vanguard, Steve and I headed down to the Django in the Roxy Hotel to hear Eric Alexander play. Now, while going out to hear live music is one of the best things anyone can do to improve their musicianship, you also have to do a lot of study and practice, which is why you're gonna to wanna to check out the courses we have available over at bettersax.com for all different levels of players. Incidentally, Steve Cortica, who's driving the car right now, and Eric Alexander have both created fantastic courses with Better Sax. I put links in the description for you to learn more about those. Just by watching, liking videos, subscribing, leaving comments, you are supporting us. But those folks who purchase the courses are the ones that really make it possible for us to create videos like the one you're watching right now on a regular basis. So thank you all so very much. Greatest night for me of my life in terms of that type of stuff was when I heard Jackie McLean playing at the Village Vanguard the day that Dexter Gordon died. I will never forget it. The raw power and humanity was spectacular. <laughs> One of the foundational and fundamentally important things in all of our development as jazz musicians is to get out there and hear some live music. Hearing live music transmits something that cannot be acquired vis-a-vis -vis recordings or hearsay. You have to experience it, you have to feel the power, the emotional integrity. The amount of live music you can go hear on any given day in New York is astounding. On the last day of my trip, my favorite band, the California Honey Drops, was playing at Sony Hall. They graciously invited me to play a tune with them on stage. Personally, I've studied a lot of music at school, on recordings, in lessons, and in books. And while I've learned a ton from all of those sources, the source that I've learned the most from by far has always been playing music live with other musicians. And the gateway to each and every playing experience has always been going to hear music live. every band I've ever played with, every musical connection I've made in my network always started out with me going to a live show. All of the most influential moments in time for me musically have happened at concerts. Sometimes I was playing, other times I was just listening. The moral 
of this story is that an essential and defining part of being a musician is going out to concerts. No matter what kind of music you want to play, the pivotal events in your journey are going to happen at live shows. We don't have epiphanies in the practice room. Right now, I want you to do a search for artists you love who are playing nearby and get some tickets. The last concert I went to in this series was by one of the most influential saxophonists of the past generation, and it happened to be in my neighborhood at the Monte Carlo Jazz Festival. This player is so influential, he's already been mentioned twice in this video by others. Of course, I'm talking about Joshua Redman. Mm -hmm. 